This is the story of an American hero who became an American monster. In the not too distant future, the United States will make a celebrated return to capsule based space travel. Such a mission requires men of vision, men of strength, men of courage. Within this capsule is one such man, Joseph Newman, a good old American Joe. This capsule, along with its pilot, will rocket into space at speeds of over 70 miles an hour. It will orbit the Earth for seven hours, then if all goes according to plan, will return safely to the planet's surface. What Joe does not yet know is things will not go according to plan. For Joe Newman is about to go into outer space as a man, but he will return as Inhuman Witch. Alright, that's 20 minutes into the launch by my count. How's he doing? Orbit is holding steady, good speed, plenty of fuel. He could stay up there for days if he wanted to. Mario, let's not get out of ourselves. How's Joe? About as healthy as ever. I don't think I'd have a heartbeat that steady if I were shot in a space by a rusty slingshot. What? Right now? All right, gentlemen, listen up. We're about to get a visit from the President of the United States. Not about to, Ed. You're getting it right now. Mr. President, Mrs. First Lady, I'd like to introduce you to Ed Farley, the flight director of the Argo One. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. Honor's all mine, Farley. Heck of a place you got Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to know our tax dollars are going to good use. Yes, sir, indeed. It's good to know. Ed, would you care to give the President a rundown of where we are with the mission right now? Absolutely. Say this basketball is the Earth. And this rubber ducky dressed as a pirate is a space capsule Argo One. Okay. 11.45 a.m., Argo-1 launched from Florida, quickly achieving orbit about three miles above Earth's surface. At current speed and velocity, you'll be able to orbit twice more around the planet. We're landing right back here around 8 p.m. tonight. And this Joe Newman fellow, he's the one stuck inside this contraption. Yes, sir. He's the man for the job. About the damn finest pilot I've ever met. I can't wait to meet him. You won't need to wait, Mr. President. It's time for a 12 o'clock video check-in. You mean we get a video signal all the way out into space? Two-way communication, sir. Just like a telephone. But with pictures. Yes, sir. With pictures. We're ready to establish the video uplink. All right, patch it through now. Mission Control, Argo-1. Mission Control to Argo-1. How you doing out there, Joe? Couldn't be better. The launch was pretty wild. Nothing quite like riding a 10-ton Roman candle to the top of the sky. Good to hear. Well, we got somebody that would like to say a few words. Hello, Joe. Why, hello, Mr. President. This sure is a big honor. Although, I guess I should tell you, I voted for the other guy. Ah, uh, just kidding. I don't vote. <laughs> wow. Just want to let you know, all Americans are mighty proud of what you're doing. It's another wonderful achievement for the U.S. of A. Gosh, Mr. President, that's really good to hear. All right, Joe, enough small talk. Let's test out that artificial gravity device of Dr. Chang's. Artificial gravity? Uh, yes, sir. The lack of gravity in space makes it difficult for astronauts to endure long flights, and Dr. Chang here has invented a way we may be able to fix all that. We're all set. Whenever you're ready, switch it on. Okay, here goes nothing. All systems are holding steady. Say. Seems to be working just fine. That's amazing. How are you doing that, Joe? I'm afraid I don't understand all the ins and outs of it myself. I ought to let Dr. Chang take it from here. He's the one that designed this whole getup. Well, now the whole thing's pretty complicated, and I'm no rocket scientist, but the basics go something like this. In order to replicate the complete force of Earth's gravitational pull, we place a large super-powered radioactive iron core in the bottom section of the space capsule. Once activated, the iron core's enormous density creates a great amount of force, which we then use to fuel a giant vacuum, which sucks everything inside of the capsule down to the floor, approximating Earth's natural gravity. A vacuum cleaner in space? That's just what women need. Another place where they have to do housework. <laughs> 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 
So you said this iron, whatchamacallit, is radioactive? Oh yes, extremely radioactive. Probably far, far more radioactive than it will ever need to be in its unimaginably long lifespan. But not to worry, we've taken every measure necessary to ensure the safe handling of both the iron core and the vat of gallons upon gallons of nuclear waste produced every minute during the energy process. Why? <laughs> it would take quite the frightening catastrophe for anything to possibly go wrong with any of this immeasurably radioactive materials. We certainly aren't expecting any frightening catastrophes anytime soon, right, Doc? Hmm, indeed. Well, I can see you have all this under control. My only an absolute fool would even dare consider the possibility of unexpected danger. Let me see that baseball trick again, son. Outstanding! Sorry to interrupt the fun, but by my schedule, it's time for Joe's lunch break. All right, that's enough with the Raleigh Fingers routine, Joe. Time for lunch, as long as that's okay with you, Mr. President. Oh, don't let me get in the way. Astronauts can't zip around outer space on an empty stomach. Let's see what Lisa packed for me this time. Lisa's a spoiler. She's a heck of a cook. Hot dog! Sloppy Joe. Ah, oh, Lisa makes the best Sloppy Joes. I wish I could be in Earth orbit right now. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Ooh, I sure do like a good Sloppy Joe. All American food. Ground beef, tomato sauce, diced onions. No onions here, Mr. President. My wife leaves them out on account of I'm allergic. I swell up like a balloon and get very lethargic. It's like I can't move at all. I'm sorry to hear that, son. Don't be. Besides, there's no real reason for me to be mentioning it at all. That Lisa must be some woman. I like the old ball and chain over there, if you fellas know what I mean. Hey, Ed. I'm getting some strange readings on the radar. Yeah, me too. What do you make of this? I can't be. It goes against all of our calculations. What is it? What am I looking at? Meteors! Meteors? Meteors, Mr. President. Chunks of rock flying around in space, ranging in size from a baked potato all the way to, oh, say, Wisconsin. Oftentimes, these meteors get pulled in by Earth's gravity, but they burn up while passing through the atmosphere and land without causing any significant damage. But the Argo-1 is flying above the Earth's atmosphere, where they retain their full size and destructive power. Just how many of these meteors are we talking about? Thousands, maybe millions. It's an entire meteor shower raining down over the Indian Ocean. This wasn't scheduled to happen until... Oh, yeah, right. All right, hey, Joe, lunch is over. I need you buckled in and ready for some tricky maneuvers. You'll need to boost thrusters by 18% and steer three degrees to your left. Wait. Yeah, that's right, your left. We've got more to worry about. I'm getting an excessive amount of radiation from the Argo-1's external sensors. The Himmler field. At this time of day? But how? What's the Himmler field? An intense mass of deadly omega particles sort of locked in space, captured by Earth's magnetic field, hovering high above the atmosphere, right about where the Argo-1 is in orbit. Usually quite harmless, but a few years ago, Dr. Heinz Himmler discovered that certain sections of the particle field could overload and become all too dangerous at certain times of night. But it's not night. We specifically planned this to be a daytime mission. But we forgot. You see, in America, it's daytime, but on the other side of the world, it's night. Don't worry, boys. I've seen worse. I flew in two wars, shot down hundreds of enemy fighters, all while dodging artillery heavier than this. If I can survive all that, I sure as heck can survive a meteor shower from a wall of radiation. Severe damage to the artificial gravity unit. The whole system's ready to overload. Damn it, Joe, hold it together up there! He's entered the Himmler field. What the? The waste from the core is spilling over. Shut down the artificial gravity unit. That should contain the leak. Nothing's happening. You'll have to switch it off manually, Joe. That was quite fun. And I sure did learn a lot, too. Let's say we three head on out, grab some lunch of our own. That sounds fantastic. You know the cafeteria here makes a mean Salisbury steak. If we hurry, we could probably grab some before they run out. 
Ed, fellas, you keep up the good work. Salisbury steak, yes, sir. I like gravy. Hello? Lisa, it's Ed Farley here. Well, hello, Ed Farley. It's great to hear your voice. How are things down in Mission Control? I've got some bad news, Lisa. What? Bad news? What is it? Are you sitting down? Am I sitting down? No? Why? What's wrong? There's been a terrible accident. Oh, there's been a terrible accident? Oh no, is it Joe? What happened? Joe's ship had flew through a radioactive meteor shower, completely destroying the ship's computers and causing some kind of malfunction that could have contaminated Joe. Uh, right now the ship is in uh, decay in orbit, and we highly doubt that he'll survive the impending crash. Joe's capsule flew through a radioactive meteor storm, and it completely destroyed the ship's computers, causing a malfunction that seems to have contaminated Joe, and his ship is now in a decaying orbit, and you highly doubt he'll survive the impending crash? That's horrible! That's absolutely horrible! Whatever can I do? Not much at the moment, I'm afraid. Not much at the moment. Now you listen, Ed Farley. As the wife of an astronaut, I deserve to be involved somehow. After all, if he dies, I'm obligated to serve the remainder of his term. All right, Lisa. What? Well, listen, Dr. Chang went What's down to the cafeteria to get some Dr. lunch. Chang but when he gets back, we're going to start the calculations needed to figure out just where so Joe's going to come crashing down in some sort of hellish blaze. Smashing the earth's surface is so great that no human being down in some hellish blaze. Why don't you come on down to Mission Control the way things out here with so us? so great no human being could possibly survive. And in the meantime, why don't I come on down to Mission Control? I can wait things out there. Is that it, Ed? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. Oh, hey, Lisa, one more thing on your way. Can you bring... Man, that's good Salisbury steak. Hey, what do they got with it? Potatoes? Mashed potatoes, and I got the carrots. Uh, see, I'm not a big cooked carrot fan. That's just an option. They also have green bean corn and... Some sort of fruit cup. Now, fruit cup I could go for. Not a big fan of the fruit cup. Really? Yeah, pineapple. It gets everywhere. Everything tastes like pineapple. You know how it is. I suppose so, but I, I really like the pineapple. Then the fruit cup's your thing. Fruit cup's my thing. Dr. Chang, we've been monitoring Joe's radio signal. Huh? Wondered if you wanted an update. Yes, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, well, that is to be expected. After all, it won't be long until Joe's crashing down in some hellish blaze, smashing into the Earth's surface at speed so great no human being could possibly survive. Now let's see this map. Here are those calculations you requested, Doctor. These are the latest from the Computron? Yes, Doctor. Hmm, very good. Let's see. I could. Well, maybe you should try a little harder next time. Any word on Joe? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, my poor, poor Joe. You can help him, can't you, Ed? It's all up to Dr. Chang at this point. Yes, that's it. The Argo 1 is due to make landfall right about here. In about five minutes, I'd say. Why, that's not too far from here. Yeah, that's old man Hampton's farm. I used to go cow tipping there when I was a boy. If we take this old back road here, we'll be there in no time. I'll get the medical kit. What is it? How recent are these latest readings? Hot off the presses. And you're certain about the accuracy? Oh, you know the Computron's as good as it gets. There's nothing better on this planet. Then it's worse than I thought. The levels of radiation and other toxins inside the Argo One are... Why, I've never seen anything quite like it. The numbers are simply for lack of a better word, astronomical. Well, what does that mean for Joe? I'm not sure. I'll be able to say with more certainty once I see the inevitable wreckage. After all, with the Argo One crashing down in some hellish blaze, smashing into the Earth's surface at speeds so great no human being could possibly survive, I'd say a colossal dose of radioactive materials would probably be the least of Joe's concerns. I'd guess that a fiery demise would be sweet, sweet relief compared to the unholy agony that would await him if he were to survive. <clears throat> but I'm sure he'll be just fine. Let's go. Ooh, I got shotgun. That's the sort of song that makes you want to get a little closer to someone you love.
You tell me about it. Now here's a little something for all the lovebirds out there called Raincoats are for Sale. <laughs> Let's make our own music, baby. Holy cow! What do you think that was? I don't know, something going that fast, packing that much of a wall. You know, I bet it was that spaceship that crashed earlier today. The, uh, what's it called? The Argo One. The Argo what? The Argo One. It was all over the news, didn't you hear? Something went haywire while it was in orbit. The authorities figured it was bound to come crashing down sooner or later. That's terrible. Yeah, but the astronauts knew what kind of danger they were getting into. And besides, a rescue team will be along soon enough. Oh. Now, where were we? Tom, don't you think we should go see if we can help? Oh, I don't know about that. But there could be an injured man out there. And with these back roads, who knows how long it will take for help to arrive. Yeah, but Betty... Tom, would you sit here and make out rather than help somebody? Yes? Get my coat. We're gonna find that spaceship. Oh, okay, but I might need a minute before I can stand up. <laughs> I think I see it! Wow. Do you think anyone could be alive in there? I don't know. Only one way to find out. Hey, anyone alive in there? Don't worry, we're gonna get you out. Dr. Chang, you and I better get out now and make our way to the crash site on foot. Floyd, Murray, you drive around a little bit more so you can find a closer place to park. And keep an eye on Lisa. I don't think she's gonna like what we find. You got it. You're almost there! Just push! Bugs Meanie, you are up to your old tricks, but you're not going to get away with it this time. That's right. Turn to page 110 and see the... <laughs> yeah, I was right that time. Uh, damn raccoons. Okay, who's out here? I can hear you out there. Go. Great Santa Claus. <laughs> A mess! Yeah, there's no way you could survive an accident like that without suffering a large amount of horrible mutilation. You know, I've seen a lot of horrible things at my time in the space industry, but this takes the cake. Joe has got to be walking through the pearly gates as we speak. Or dealing with old pitch downstairs is more like it. I mean, let's face it, Joe is no saint. You remember that weekend in Tallahassee when we bought all that bad oh ecstasy and Joe punched that cop in the face and then we hired those triplets for the whole day? <laughs> he couldn't walk straight for a week after that. 
Then we had to tell his stupid, stupid wife it was a water, water ski accident. accident. <laughs> yeah. If I know Joe, he's walking through the bowels of hell as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure he's fine. 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 Yeah. Sam, what do you make of this right here? Hmm. This looks like a skeleton. Could it be Joe? Doubtful. This is the remains of a teenage female, not a full-grown male. What do you think happened to her? Hmm. If I were to hazard a guess, I'd say this girl was absorbed. Absorbed? Yes. You see this residue here? This could be traces of, well, hmm. Hmm. I didn't know any better. I'd say this was a case of meat being consumed by meat. Meat? As in the girl's flesh? What animal could do this to her? Again, this is mere speculation at this point, but this was no woodland creature eating this poor girl to the bone. This was... Well, I'd like to take some samples and get them back to the lab. I could be more certain then. It must be Joe. I just know it. No, actually, Lisa, Joe's body wasn't in the capsule. We don't really know what happened to him. Are you sure? Not entirely, no. Based on these remains here, it's quite possible Joe escaped from the Argo one, only to meet with a more gruesome fate in these very woods. <laughs> Grow a pair. Is this Joe's skeleton? Actually, these are the remains of a teenage girl. What happened? Dr. Chang says that she's been absorbed. You boys help me gather up some samples, but be most careful. We don't want to contaminate any of the specimens. You all right? Dr. Chang seems to have a hunch, and I'd sure like to know if his hunch and my hunch are the same hunch. Lloyd, take Dr. Chang back to the lab, run some test results, see what you guys figure out. Right. Murray, I want you to come with us. These woods could be dangerous. All right. Floyd, go get the car. Take Dr. Chang back to the lab, see what you guys can figure out with these specimens. Got it. Murray, you're coming with us. I could use backup. All right, boss. Floyd, you and Dr. Chang go back to the lab, see what you find. And Murray, you're coming with us. These woods could be dangerous, and I could use the backup. All right. And I'd like to come with you, too. If Joe's out there somewhere, he may need my help. All right, Lisa. But Murray, you might want to come, too, just in case something goes wrong. Let's do this. These tracks seem to be getting bigger. Yeah, weird. Got it. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Joe? No, I don't think that's Joe. My instincts tell me Joe's still alive. You don't think Joe killed those people? Joe? He may have been an a-hole, but I don't think Joe's a killer. There's no way he could have done this unless he was really fast and had a lot of knives. Ed and Lisa, check this out. Trail keeps going this way. You think you can still do it? Good. Unless he had one of those electric knives like at Thanksgiving. Hey guys, there's another one. He's stripped clean, just like the others. How does he do it? Could be raccoons. Is that you, Joe? Ready? On three. One, two, three. No use! Run!
It's worse than I thought. Was that Joe? What could have turned Joe into that thing? That's for Dr. Chang to figure out, but I'm betting it has something to do with the accident over the Indian Ocean. There's gotta be something I can do, some way to reason with him. At least I don't think that thing is capable of reason. That thing is my husband. Not anymore. Joe Newman as we knew him doesn't exist. There's gotta be some way we can fight it. Well, if bullets don't work, I don't know what can. <gasps> Look! Oh, hey! Listen, you! The molecular structure is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Dr. Chang. Dr. Chang. What is it? We found Joe. He did? What happened? I don't know how to describe it. Well, then don't. It was horrible. Too impossible to believe. Then I won't. Let me take a guess. Joe has mutated into a large, shapeless mass of loose ground beef and various other ingredients, including tomato sauce and various other spices and seasonings. This mutated mass is capable of absorbing the flesh of living creatures and, as it does so, continues to grow at a rate only limited by its appetite. Joe Newman, as we know him, no longer exists. His consciousness replaced with a simpler brain, one that is not capable of love or hate, good or evil, only hunger. Intense, unsatiable hunger. How do you know all this? Science, my dear girl, science. A thorough analysis of the samples we took from the crash last night told me everything there is to know about Joe's transformation. For instance, while contact with any part of the meat while it is connected to the mutated mass that we call Joe is deadly indeed, any residue remaining in its wake disconnected from the mass as part of a trail, for lack of a better words, is completely harmless. Delicious, too, which is funny, because it's usually the onion that give it that nice, bold flavor. But seeing as Joe's mutation didn't involve any onion, I guess it's something else in the recipe. Well, there's Worcestershire sauce. That could be it. Or maybe mustard. The recipe does call for a pinch of mustard. It could be the mustard. I mean, it tastes great. Not that it matters. I mean, there's no real logical reason for me saying any of this at all. <laughs> This was one of the few pleasant surprises I uncovered during my efforts to understand the creature. Creature? Yes, my dear. Creature. We must no longer consider this entity to be Joe Newman, American hero. We must strike out all notions that within this beast lies the heart of a caring husband. We must remain determined in our belief that there is no hope, no none at all, for Joe as a human being. I won't believe it. I just won't. Hmm. Believe what you will, but this creature must be destroyed at all cost. The fate of the country, nay, the fate of the very world itself depends on it. No, wait a minute, Doctor. The fate of the world? Yes, the fate of the world. You see, Joe will continue to grow not only with every victim he devours, but with time itself. Let's see. The transformation started around 18 hours ago, and began taking full effect during the crash last night. I'd estimate that by later tonight, the creature's mass would have grown large enough to cover a city the size of, oh, say, Cincinnati. The Queen City? Perhaps the whole tri-state area. You're telling me this thing is gonna keep on growing until it can devour Cincinnati? Oh no, it's quite worse than that. You see, if the creature does envelop that city first, and I believe that it will, Cincinnati is the chili capital of the world. This will ensure that it ingests an unusually high amount of spiced ground beef, thus accelerating its growth rate. By tomorrow morning, the creature will have grown large enough to cover the entire Midwest. By tomorrow night, the entire country. 
by this time next week, the entire planet. Good God! Yes, that's just what the Hebrews thought. Well, I for one am not going to just stand around and wait for the world to be destroyed by some mutated astronaut. Get me General Graham. What in the Sam hell's an Argo I? The Argo One, sir. Humanity's grand return to capsule-based space travel, launched into orbit yesterday. Its mission was to run various tests as to the feasibility of expanding the Argo program to man voyages to the moon, Mars, and one day, the outer planets. Spaceship, huh? That's all we need, more Poindexters poking around in outer space, when that money could go to good old defense right here on planet Earth. Yes, sir. And now that pop bottle crash and the pilot's on some sort of rampage? Yes, sir. The craft flew through a heavy field of radiation, which is common enough. That's why you never saw John Glenn's legs on TV after he returned from orbit. The space radiation turned him into a merman. The Glenn incident aside, most of the mutations have minimal effect and are easily kept under wraps. Uh, Neil Armstrong's third arm, Jim Lovell's glow-in-the-dark skin, that sort of thing. This time, however, a combination of additional catastrophes exacerbated the mutation, turning this monster into an unstoppable killing machine. And now, once again, the Brainiacs need Uncle Sam's army to get them out of a pickle. Yes, sir. Well, Corporal, let's go do what we do best. Let's blow us up a meat monster. Looks like Joe's on the move again. They found three bodies at a house, 227 Bridge Street, the remains of a dog in the woods. Oh, that poor dog. Yeah, the three people. What a shame to kill a poor innocent puppy like that. And three people? That poor, poor dog. Floyd, load up the car. A few witnesses say the creature went back into the woods. We should be able to follow the trail from there. Get me General Graham. Again. That was Ed Farley down in Mission Control. Said there was a port of a monster sighting over there on Bridge Street, which is right here. Says that thing leaves a pretty noticeable trail. As we follow that trail as far as it goes, and send that SOB meat monster right back to hell. That's a good plan, sir. Thanks. Good to see you yeah, again. I just wish it was under better circumstances, General. Let me show you what we're dealing with. All right. So here. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It's, 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 oh. You roll. You roll. Right here. You One more here. One more. Oh, that good game. Good game. Dr. Chang, this is General Graham. Graham, Chang. There's one more inside and another around the back. Not to mention some canine remains we found in the woods back there. Oh, that poor dog. All killed the same way. Flesh, tissue. Internal organs, all stripped clean. So this, uh, this thing really is eating everything in its past. Mainly animal matter. Yeah, bullets aren't stopping it either. Well, we'll see about that. Hey guys, come here, I think I found something. All right, look, I think I found this guy. He might be a witness, he said he saw something. This gentleman here, Mr. Uh... Uh, James Beckerish. I live across the street, right over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he found the thing, he told me, uh, I'm sorry, how did you describe it? Well, well first off, you should know I'm no snoop. And I don't make a habit of spying on my neighbors. And I certainly don't sit in front of the window for 12 hours every day, waiting for the young lady who lives here to, to put on a white t-shirt and go out and wash her car. And no, sir, that's just not my style to set up a camera at the bedroom window uh, and hoping that, that uh, someone forgets to uh, uh, close the curtains before getting uh, undressed. A thought never crossed my mind. I, I'm, I'm no snoop. Of course you're not. Now about the thing that you say you saw. Hmm? Oh, oh yeah. Well, it's like a, a, 
Uh, my house, it gets bigger and bigger, a sort of chocolatey brown and, and lumpy, almost meaty, but not quite pulled pork, though. More like uh, chili or uh, 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 a sloppy Joe sandwich. Yeah, like a sloppy Joe sandwich. Anyway, this thing leaps out the front door and eats a big fellow and, and uh, ooh, terrible way to go, I say. Yes, sir, a terrible way to go. Then what? Well, it, it, it uh, leaves out the front door, eats that big fellow, and yes. crawls off the front porch and right around here. And, well, it's the darnest thing. The, the garage door was closed, but, but uh, it, it must have, must have found a big enough opening because the next thing I know, it, it squeezed itself inside. Haven't seen it since. We checked around back. There's a door there, but it's locked. The only way in and out is the garage. Well, it's still got to be in there. I, uh, I watch it all this time and didn't say anything leave. Well, thank you very much for your help, Mr. Magrish. Thank you. Uh, uh, always want to do what I can. Looks like we got this thing cornered. What do you think, Corporal? I think we'll wrap this up quick and be home in time for dinner, sir. All right, let's get this door open. No good, sir. It's stuck, sir. Give him a hand. Uh, all right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. My way. You still got your favor. Still got your favor. <laughs> Let him have it, boys. That ought to do it. Is it dead? I can't say for certain. These readings only tell me there's no living creature inside. Good enough for me, let's open it up. It's gone. Must have found a way to unlock that door from the inside. Very crafty. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. That man needs a medic. Help him out. Everyone else, let's go back as a flesh-eating mutant. Get a look at this. Damn, with all this mud, I can't tell where the trail goes. Clever. Very clever. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. How's your tracking skills? Can you sort out this mess? I can, sir. By the time we find that trail, the creature could be anywhere. He might be easier to find than you think. He's still hungry, and he's getting hungrier by the minute. He'll head somewhere where there's a large group of people. And when he does, God help them all. Nice day for a picnic, Father. It most certainly is, Harry. It most certainly is. Don't work yourself too hard, and be sure to come by and get yourself something to drink when you're done setting up. I'm gonna. Sherry, hello. Beautiful day for a picnic, wouldn't you say? You bet. Care for some punch, Father? I would love some, thank you. Hi, Sherry. Hey, Mitch. You brought your guitar. Yeah, I thought I might sing a couple of songs. Uh, that is if Father Corgan says it's all right. How about it, Father? Well, I think that's a terrific idea. I'd love to hear some of that rock and roll I've heard so much about. I might look square, as you kids would say, but I'd like to think that I'm still in it. You mean with it, Father? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh, Father. <laughs> 
everybody, Mitch is going to sing a song. Yeah! Okay, everybody, this is a very special song I wrote for a very special gal. A one, a two, a one, two, three. My baby, she's as cute as she can be. Well, my baby, she's as cute as she can be. From her eyes to her knees, to her 36 C's. My baby, she's as cute as she can be. My baby, she don't love no one but me. Oh, my baby, she don't love no one but me. I go over to her place, but I can't get the second. Of an appetite. There's plenty of food up here. Help yourself. I'm going to. The ladies have really outdone themselves this year. You can say that again, partner. Let's go! Get on the horn to headquarters. We're gonna need some backup. What is it? I don't know. You better get to safety. You go over there. Keep your distance. Okay, when I give the word, you plug this into the shed over there. I'm gonna give that thing a sense of what 120 volts feels like. Got it. Tell more of my lover! Sucker! Ah! Now, why didn't that work? Ah, who told you how to shoot? You missed it completely! Mitch! General, I'm telling you, bullets are useless. Corporal! Yes, sir! How's your throwing arm? Top shape, sir. Let him have it! <clears throat> Grenades don't kill it. Maybe not from the outside. Time for a little thing. I picked up an operation carrot top. Lieutenant, I want you to take this pineapple and get inside that creature. Now, once you're inside that creature, I want to pull this little pin here and make it out of there too sweet. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, son. It's going to be pretty dangerous, and it might not make it back. But if we do, I'll give you a medal for sure. But I'm going to tell you right now, we don't do this kind of thing for medals, do we? No, we don't. We do this because we protect our country. We're sworn to protect it. Now, go out there and show Lady Liberty how much you love her. <laughs> Look! Joe! 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 Joe, I know you're still in there. I know you still remember what it's like to be human, what it's like to love. Now's our chance. I keep telling them you're no monster. You're Joe Newman, my husband. She'll get killed out there. No, let her talk. I think she's on to something. Joe, you remember that vacation we took when we went to Cleveland? We went to that restaurant and we saw Tom Hanks and I wanted his autograph but was afraid I'd be a bother. And you walked me over to his table and introduced me? And you remember how Tom Hanks offered you $100 if you could have me for the weekend? 
And you told him no. My wife's worth at least 150. And that's how we got the money, so you could buy me that fabulous blue dress you say matches my eyes. Don't you see, Joe? You're not some man-eating mutant that kills everything in its path without prejudice. You're Joe Newman, the kind of guy that wouldn't let Tom Hanks molest me for less than $150. I think she might be getting to it. Joe, let's stop all this nonsense. Let Ed and Dr. Ch- Called it. What do we do now, sir? Lieutenant, give me that napalm. Wait, we may not need your napalm just yet. What was it Joe was saying yesterday? You know, before he turned into an unstoppable killing machine. Something around the time he was having lunch in low earth orbit. What was it now? Something, uh, ah yes, onions. Joe said he was allergic to onions. Onions, what good is that gonna do? No, 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 the doctor's right. If we can get those onions off that table and maybe get them into the monster somehow, then we can uh, make the monster all... Uh... Uh, he'd get really lethargic and swell up like a balloon. Yeah! Yeah, but that thing's enormous. Those are just a few small onions. It may not be enough to kill it, perhaps, but it will be enough to slow it down, long enough for us to make our escape. Lieutenant, never mind the boom juice. What you need to do is create a diversion. Get the onions off that table. Lieutenant, quiet as a mouse, not repeat. Hey, baby. Hey, what's up? Uh, you know, not much. Hey, but here's the plan. Um, you put on your hot granny panties. I'm gonna get some Smirnoff ices. I'm gonna pick up a copy of the notebook, Talladega Nights, you know, a little love, uh, little laughs. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, all right? Maybe I'm gonna have to hit you back, toodles. <laughs> Looks like that little maneuver of yours worked out. Yeah, how long do you think it's gonna stay like that? <sighs> hey, hey, Jack! What's that crazy fool think he's doing? I needed a sample of living tissue. The previous sample was from dead cells and I just couldn't get a thorough analysis of it. But, but this, this will tell me everything I need to know about the creature. Is it safe? In its current state, yes. And if we can get it back to the lab in time, I can contain it with some onions I keep on hand for just such an emergency. Then we better hurry. Yes. We've got to get this back to the lab. Yeah. Right. Yeah, come on. Okay. 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 Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I see it now. Just keep an eye out and uh, let me know when that thing starts moving again. Fly boys came through. They got a helicopter in the air right now. That thing is so much it sneezes, we'll be able to track it. Why would a giant meat monster sneeze? Where do you think it'll head to next? Uh, so far, it's followed a fairly straight path. I plotted its movements on this map here. Based on my estimations, the creature's headed right for Cincinnati. The Queen said. The very same. These onions won't hold him for long, and. Once he regains full strength, he'll be in downtown in a matter of hours. Great Scott, hundreds of lives could be at risk. You heard the man, Corporal. We gotta get this stuff back to the lab. Step on it. Mayor Van Horn, it's a genuine privilege to be here in Cincinnati, or as you call it, the Queen City. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to have you visit our city. Okay, folks, I think that's quite enough pictures for right now. The mayor and the president have quite a lot of business to discuss. In about an hour, the president will be making his way down to the chili factory for a tour, and then he'll be making a stop by the Pete Rose Memorial. There'll be plenty of time for pictures there. In the meantime, if I could have you wait downstairs, my assistant will be handing out press kits to you. Thank you. Honey, why don't you wait outside, too? Us men have some business to discuss. Come on, ma'am. There's quite a lot to see in this city, and I think we have enough time to fit it in. I'll take you to see the house where George Clooney lost his virginity. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Fat man. Damn it, Mike. What are we going to do about these poll numbers of yours? If you're serious about making a run for the Senate in November, 
You've got to get these numbers up, and fast. Well, if you'd ever get around to sending me that I, federal money... You know it's not that easy. Well, I've got... Sorry to bother you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President. Mr. Mayor, I have a General Graham on the phone. He says it's very urgent. Something about a vicious, unstoppable mutant hell beast from outer space laying waste to all that dare cross its path. Now it's heading straight for the city, and the Army will need to start putting up barricades as quickly as possible, although he's not really sure if that'll do any good, considering the creature's massive size and endless hunger for human flesh. Mine too. Well, I'd better mosey on out if I'm gonna make it to the chili factory by five. It's nice talking with you again, Mike. And remember what I said about those poll numbers. General, Mayor Van Horn, what's this about an unstoppable mutant hell beast from outer space? Good for nothing, politician. The mayor says he'll evacuate the city, but he won't make it mandatory. Because if we're wrong, it's going to hurt him in the upcoming elections. So whatever we do, we got to do it before that thing reaches city limits. What's the update on this movement? Helicopter pilot says it's back up to full speed. And moving along this path, pretty much in a straight line, going with the contours of the land, never more than a half mile in either direction. Our only chance for a barricade is right here. Corporal! Yes, sir. Okay, that barricade's going up the corner. How's it coming along, Dr. Chang? There's something about this sample I just can't quite figure out. I'm gonna need more time. Time is something we don't have, Doc. He's right. What say we get down to that barricade? Doctor! As soon as you figure out a way to stop this thing permanently, you let us know. I got more bad news. Because of the president's visit, the chili factory's doubled output today for a better photo op. Dr. Chang said the city's normal chili output will cause the creature's growth to accelerate. Yeah, double the chili means double his fast growth. This creature's not going to be able to devour the country by tomorrow evening. It's going to be able to devour the country by tomorrow afternoon. Who's in charge here? You? You're General Graham? You must be Van Horn. That's Mr. Mayor to you. You want to tell me what this is all about? I have constituents calling me up, telling me there's a military raid going on in their neighborhood. Well, Mr. Mayor, if you want us to pack up and go home, that's fine. But I hope you have some powerful weapons and have fancy car of yours. Because coming down this very road right now is a monster the likes of which you can't even begin to imagine. And down that road is a chili factory. Now, I don't know much about science, but this fella here, he's from Space Command as a scientific expert. And he says if that monster meets that chili factory, well, you won't have anyone calling you. You're not gonna have a city to run. Do you really want that in your conscience? I still say you're overreacting. A mutated meat monster from outer space? That's absurd. You wanna take that chance? I'm going back to my office. I'll keep the evacuation in effect for now. But if this is a hoax, I'm putting the blame on you. <sighs> Let's roll, Bitterman. Which one of you greenhorns did that? Like I said before, this is for loading, this is for firing. Is it me or is this sample replicating even faster? It's almost back to its original growth rate. Has this sample been treated with the onions? Yeah, four times the amount. I keep having to add more. It's building up a resistance to the allergen. So if we keep forcing the creature to eat onions, it's just gonna build up a bigger and bigger tolerance? This sample's been treated with onions once. A second dosing will still slow it down, giving us the advantage, allowing us to hold it for about 15, maybe 20 minutes if we're lucky. But it won't kill it. It's too quiet. Yeah. Too, too quiet. The doc says to save all the onions. Don't toss any in until he gives the word, okay? Hope you trust that crazy doc. Sweet Georgia Brown. God, it won't.
won't be long until the thing's right on top of us. <sighs> I hope that doctor can work fast. All right, man, far away. No use! Everything we've tried has failed! Don't give in yet, my boy! I'm not giving in. It's just, we've been at this all day, and we're still stuck on square one. And honestly, I'm stumped. I've been stumped all day! I just wish someone would throw us a bone, you know? Give us a leg up, just let us hit the ground running and put our best foot forward. <sighs> I miss my legs. No calls from Dr. Chang, huh? I'm sure he's gonna come through. Frankly, I can't take that chance, Corporal! Yes, sir! Pass me through to the Air Force base! Yes, sir! You see, while well, Dr. Chang wastes time with his experiments, I'm losing men. Not to mention the civilians have lost their lives getting wiped out by that thing. Mm, you should really eat something, Doctor. Keep your strength up. In a while. First, I'd like to... Aha! Here, take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Do you see these stars? These stars say I'm a general of the United States Army. I'm sworn to defend my country any which way I can. The whole country. And that concludes the damn Queen City. It's no longer stable. What did you do? I dosed it with a strong acidic solution of sodium chloride and potassium chloride mixed with hydrochloric acid and the pepsin enzyme. Here, take a look at this. I can't run around fighting these damn monsters! What are you talking about? I am authorized to deploy the nation's full atomic weaponry. You don't mean. Yes, I do. I'll nuke Cincinnati right off the map. Looks like it's barely moving and very sluggish. It's still a little bit active, though. That's the reaction to the onions. Now here's the acid solution. It's breaking apart and quickly, too. Doctor, I think you've done it! No, not quite yet. It would take hours, no? days to create the amount of solution necessary to destroy the creature at its current size, let alone the size it'll be in a few hours. By then, it will be too late. Oh, that's not chilly. I won't like it. Hell, I'll probably feel pretty lousy about it for a couple minutes. You know, think about all those people that don't get to see who wins the Latin Grammys this year. Then, I think about all those other people in all those other cities that do get to see the Latin Grammys this year. And I gotta protect them, too. All right. You make the call, but you give me five minutes to see if Dr. Chang can figure out a way to stop this creature without destroying the Queen City. Five minutes? Five minutes is all I need. For your sake, I hope to God you're right! I hope so too. I hope so too. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <gasps> nothing. What? What do you mean nothing? Like I said, nothing. Wait, no, not nothing. This. What? Here, eat this. Are you crazy? Trust me! No. <laughs> I'm okay. Why, why am I okay? Stomach acids, my boy. Stomach acids. The solution in that beaker is the same chemical makeup of the solution of the acid in my stomach. Precisely. <sighs> so we can just eat the monster. Not quite. You see, if you were too close to bite into it, it would be close enough to bite into you. But what if we made it more lethargic? Maybe by an allergic reaction? Now you're thinking. We got that 52 feet in diameter, 13 feet high. And how many onions do you have? Five pounds even. Five pounds. I'll explain more once I get down there, but for now, listen to me very carefully. Got it. So what'd he say? He said once we feed the creature the onions, it'll be paralyzed for 18 minutes and it'll be safe to eat at that point in time. That much food in only 18 minutes? That's impossible. A person like that would have to be a competitive eater. That's perfect. A competitive eater could eat this thing in Easily, 18 minutes have plenty of time to spare. Cool, bro! Way ahead of you, sir. I'm passed through to the Pentagon. They're checking the files, but it's not looking good. Because apparently, not too many competitive eaters bother to register with the government, and the ones that do don't update their contact information often enough. What goes the competitive eater database if it's not comprehensive and up to date? Stay on the line and keep trying. Yes, sir. I got an idea. I can wait here, guys. Hey! you just in time. What's going on here? I'm gonna see if there's a competitive eater in the crowd. You mean you haven't found one yet? No, but I mean, this many people, there's just gotta be someone. All right, good luck. I'll let the general know I'm here. All right, thank you. <sighs> Excuse me. I think we figured out a way to stop the creature and save the city, but to do that, 
We need a competitive eater. Even if you haven't competed professionally or if you were a competitive eater on a high school team or something. Anyone, anybody, please. The fate of this city, the fate of the world depends upon it. Just please help us. I can do it. Bert, no. No, honey, it's all right. Bert Stevens, I can eat this thing. You're a competitive eater? I used to be. That was a long time ago. I was the best of the best. World champion. I had it all. Money, fame, women. And it all came crashing down that one July afternoon. Hooters was sponsoring a buffalo wing contest. It started like any normal wing contest. But then, well, all these years later, I've never forgiven myself for what happened next. But if the fate of the world depends on it, I can do this. Come with me. Bert Stevens, Allison Stevens, this is General Graham and Dr. Chang. Bert Stevens used to be a competitive eating champion. Pleasure to meet you. So you're the one who's gonna try to save our necks. I'll certainly try. You're brave, but you also know nonsense. I like that. It doesn't change the fact that you're going out there for and get that creature under control. You sure you want to take that risk? I'm sure. Bert, no! No, honey, it's all right. Boyd? Hold on! You don't know what that thing can do out there! Look, I appreciate the concern, but I have to know what kind of Sloppy Joe that is if I'm gonna deal with a mound of meat that size. There's over 750 recipes for Sloppy Joe in the United States alone. You go worldwide, that number triples. I mean, there's like 218 in Finland alone. Each one has its own unique flavor, texture, density. I'm telling you, something could go seriously wrong if I go into this thing blind. Yeah, I mean, I know what's at stake. And I know what that thing could do to me if I get too close. And to be honest, I just had one of those poop farts and my drawers feel kind of funny right now. But if you want me to do what I was brought over here to do, then mister, I gotta get over there and smell that meat. Bert, no! No, honey, it's all right. Get that man some color! The barricade's not gonna hold much longer. Oh, it's coming through! Give it up, get back! Bert, come on, there's no time! Just one more minute! Oh, stupid fool! Wow, you saved my life. Thanks. Don't take me in. Woo! It, no more barricade. If that thing makes it past this street, it's gonna get to the chili factory. Whatever we're gonna do, we gotta do now. What do you say, Stevens? You learn what you need to learn back there. Yeah, it's ground beef, tomato soup, Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, maybe a pinch of mustard. It's a pretty common recipe in the Atlantic states. It's a little tart for my taste, but it goes down easy. Corporal, you got those onions? Yes, sir. Wait, onions? Five pounds of them. It's what we need to paralyze a creature long enough to make it safe to eat. Why, what's wrong? I'm allergic to onions. How allergic? I swell up and I get real lethargic. Have you eaten five pounds of onions? Well, I don't know. I've always avoided finding out. So what's it gonna be? Don't you die on me, Johnny! It's all right, little brother. It's not your fault. Is there something I need you to do for me? If you ever get a chance to save a city somewhere in the Midwest, you know, like Cincinnati or something? The, the Queen City? If you ever get a chance to save a place like that from being destroyed by a horrible monster, you do it. No matter what the risk, little brother, you do it. Do it for me. Johnny? Johnny! Come up! Wake up, Johnny! Wake up, Johnny! Let's go save us a city. Bert, no! No, honey. 
It's all right. So what's the game plan? Corporal! Yes, sir! Any windows on the second floor of this place? Why, yes, sir, I believe there are. Then get a move on, soldier! They're not going in! Uh, creature must have figured out a way to resist absorbing something it doesn't want to eat. So what do we do? I don't know. We've got to find a way. Floyd! What are you doing? He can't eat my legs twice. All right, you overgrown entree. I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Floyd, no! Enough, you magnificent son of a bitch. You got 18 minutes. You got it? Yeah. Bert, no. No, honey. It's all right. I got something that'll help you. What is that, an antihistamine? No, it's a muscle relaxant. It'll uh, loosen the back of your throat, control the gag reflex. Well, why would you have something like that? There's no time, Bert. What? 30 seconds! Can you do it? For Johnny? For America. For the world. But who knows what dangers we face in the future. As long as humanity continues to challenge the limits of our knowledge and explore the unseen wonders of this vast universe, there will always be men like Joan Newman, brave men who take one step too far to the places we were not intended to go. Is that the price we must pay to advance our species? Perhaps. We were lucky today. Tomorrow there could be another Joan Newman, another tragic accident. Will we be able to save the world then? Or will our thirst for knowledge finally prove to be our undoing? Hey guys, <laughs> crazy idea. Wanna get a pizza or something? You're actually hungry after all of that. I know, weird, huh? Yeah, I'll get a pizza. So what are you guys thinking? Little roses maybe? You guys had their Hawaiian pizza yet? What's that got on it? 
Pineapple? You know I don't like pineapple. I'm actually in the mood for some anchovies. Or no. No, honey. It's all right. Johnny, come on! Wake up, Johnny! Wake up, Johnny!